Hey guys, I'm Tyler and welcome back. As many of you know, especially if you watch some of the past videos, you know that we burn pellets to supplement our propane usage in the winter. Those pellets are stored out in the garage and I didn't want to bring in single bags every single day. So the solution was to build something nice for our living room where I could store multiple bags. So we came up with this storage or blanket chest that will actually hold eight 40 pound bags of wood pellets. It is made out of pure bond red oak plywood and trimmed with solid red oak. My order of operations for this build might seem a little bit out of whack to some people, but there is a method to my madness. I had a lot of this solid oak trim to get down to proper thickness, and I wanted to get that out of the way before moving on and having the box in the way when trying to get all this work done. Most of this oak is upcycled from what I think was a bed that was in the attic of the barn when we purchased the house. After marking out rough dimensions and cutting those using the miter saw, it was time for a nice long visit on the jointer to get two sides of all this stock nice and square. Some of these sections of oak were thick enough that I thought it would be faster to resaw them on the bandsaw instead of planing down all of that nice material. I resawed on the bandsaw and then moved everything to the jointer and planed everything down to three quarters of an inch. And it was a lot of planing to get everything down to the proper thickness. Once all of the planing was done, I took all of the 3 quarter inch oak to the table saw and ripped them down to the proper width. And finally it is time to move on to the plywood. Yes, it is a little bit hard to finagle around a full 4x8 sheet of plywood, but the shop is laid out just right where I can fit it in just perfectly. Here I am ripping down 3 quarter inch red oak pure bond plywood. Once the plywood was all cut to its proper width, I used some masking tape, a door board, and my rigid cordless circular saw to cross cut these sections to their proper dimensions. And now it is time for the assembly of the box itself. I chose the best sides of the plywood, added some wood glue, and then fastened everything in place using one and a quarter inch 18 gauge brad nails. I measured diagonally from both corners of the box to make sure everything was nice and square before adding in the base of the box itself. There was a little bit of a bow in the base, so I found it easiest to actually climb in the box and use my weight while reaching over the edge to fasten everything down. Seeing that we're going to have several hundred pounds of wood pellets in this storage box, I thought it would be a good idea to have a divider in the middle. Not to separate everything, more to hold the sides of the box together in case all of that weight slides around. And now that the box itself is assembled, it is time to move back to that solid oak trim. First thing I did was cut two long miters so that I could wrap the corners without any of the end grain showing. I marked out the dimensions for this using the box itself, cut them to the proper length on the miter saw, added some wood glue, and then fastened them in place from the inside with one and a quarter inch brad nails. I would like to thank all of you that are worried about me shooting nails into my hand, but the camera angle is a little bit tricky. I was careful to make sure that my hand was out of the way. It was right about now that I realized it would probably be a good idea to sand down the plywood before adding any more trim. Once the sanding was out of the way, it was just repeat everything we just did before. Mark out using the box itself, cut to length on the miter saw, wood glue, and brad nails from the inside, again and again and again.
The back section of trim on top of the box is going to be exposed so I didn't want to shoot brad nails from the top so I simply fastened in place using liberal amounts of wood glue. Following the same practice for the trim on the rest of the top of the box except I didn't want to have to clamp up and wait for the wood glue to set up so I used some quick acting CA glue to act as my clamp and hold everything in place while that wood glue set up. And then adding some stain. This is Ipswich Pine by Minwax, at least I think that's how you pronounce it. And really this didn't add much color, it just really brought out that red oak grain. I was a little bit leery about having to stain and shoot a clear coat on here, but I'm super, super happy that I put the extra effort in. I don't know about you guys, but while I'm applying finish, I always like to listen to a podcast, and today I was listening to Made for Profit by Brad Rodriguez and John Malecki. It's a great podcast if you are trying to grow an online business. Then with my exhaust fan going, it was time to use my new Fuji Spray Systems Q5 Platinum Sprayer to shoot the Rust-Oleum Clear Coat Polyurethane. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Fuji Spray Systems for being the sponsor of this video, supplying me with this Q5, and recommend them to you guys. This is a seriously high quality spray system and I couldn't be happier with the results and power, whether it be for a clear coat or a latex paint. Check them out at fujispray.com. Once the first coat had dried, I sanded with 320 and applied two more coats. While the clear coat was drying, I used my pop-up portable spray booth to apply some black paint to the hardware. There are plans for this spray booth down in the description below if you guys would be interested in building one for yourself. And now it is time to install that black hardware. First up were the hinges, pretty straightforward. We are going to be using a locking mechanism so that the kids can't fill this box up with all their toys. I fastened the first section in place and then marked out where I needed to cut a rabbit so that we could allow the lid to close. I cut that rabbit with a quarter inch straight bit on my trim router. And for the handles we are going to be using some blanket chest hardware and these are actually the pieces that I had to paint as I couldn't find black ones locally. And that was it for the build. We moved it into the house and filled it up with wood pellets. It looks great, it works great, we couldn't be more happy with how this build turned out. Well that is a wrap and I am super glad with how this turned out. The wife absolutely loved it. It is exactly what she was picturing, which doesn't happen very often, so that is super, super awesome. I actually designed this thing to hold eight 40 pound bags of pellets, but it just so happens that I'm able to get 10 in there. So I could have designed it a little bit shorter, which would have made it easier for the kids to get on here if they wanted to sit on here. But at the same time, this gives me a longer space of time before I need to bring some more bags in to burn in the pellet wood stove. I will have a free basic set of plans for this on my website, DIYTyler.com. There is the link to that in the description below. If you guys would like to build something like this or modify those plans to build something similar. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button helps us out a ton gets this video in front of more eyes and helps the channel grow don't forget to hit that subscribe button right over there so you never miss when we upload a new video i'm diy tyler and you guys have a good one